you made the right decision you're in the right place as we celebrate Jesus you're reminded of his love for us and so we are going to continue singing together feel free to join us you can sit down you can stand up join us as we sing some more Christmas carols are you excited to sing about Christmas awesome
Merry Christmas, Worship Harvest. Babos, would you like to say Merry Christmas? Merry Christmas, Worship Harvest. This evening, we are reading from Ephesians chapter 2, from verse 1 to 3, from the Passion Translation. And His fullness fills you, even though you were once like corpses, dead in your sins and offenses. It wasn't that long ago that you lived in the religion, customs, and values of this world, obeying the dark ruler of the earthly realm who fills the atmosphere with his authority and works diligently in the hearts of those who are disobedient to the truth of God. The corruption that was in us from birth was expressed through the deeds and desires of our self-life. We lived by whatever natural cravings and thoughts our minds dictated, living as rebellious children subject to God's wrath like everyone else. Ephesians chapter 2 from verse 1 to 
fathers despise their children, abandon their children, children abandon their fathers, despise them. Our light is darkness. Is that your problem now? Easy now, easy now. We are, we are fine. Things are not as bad as they seem. Here, this will dull your sorrow. Merry Christmas, Worship Harvest. Bubbles, would you like to say Merry Christmas? Merry Christmas, Worship Harvest. This evening, we are reading from Ephesians chapter 2, from verse 1 to 3, from the Passion Translation. And His fullness fills you, even though you were once like corpses, dead in your sins and offenses. It wasn't that long ago that you lived in the religion, customs, and values of this world, obeying the dark ruler of the earthly realm who fills the atmosphere with his authority and works diligently in the hearts of those who are disobedient to the truth of God. The corruption that was in us from birth was expressed through the deeds and desires of our self-life. We lived by whatever natural cravings and thoughts our minds dictated living as rebellious children subject to God's wrath like everyone else. Ephesians chapter 2 from verse 1 to 3. It was a night full of peace, a night full of bliss, a night full of splendor, a night full of peace, a night full of twists, imagine. A virgin having a baby so tender, boy by gender, born in a manger, boy full of wonder. See, he had the whole world in wonder, and it was all on the agenda. See, God had been made minor, and we all needed a major change, and it all happened in one night full of peace, one night full of light, one night just one, and the unrighteous one could finally see some hope in sight. See, this one night was no ordinary night. For the one that was born in this night is totally Christ, totally the one way, truth, and life. See, this is the season to celebrate and make merry, and the reason for this season is the son born to Joseph and Mary. We celebrate his birth because it's nothing like any. His birth was a And yeah. 
that shines in the darkness and the darkness cannot overcome it. You remember the other lady we saw? That one from evangelism. Exactly. Ah, all right. We'll oh, make, make sure. Oh, Help me count everyone's packages. Oh, you're welcome. Oh, oh. Han, how are you? I'm all right. How was evangelism? It was all right. Oh, dear. And Melanie? How could you go to, a, go to a jet of evangelism with this I baby for sure? Last MCO. Your Afande? feet have been hurting. No, no, no. Afande? Don't worry, we're going to be yeah. late. Let's go for MC. For the MC. Yeah, At let's go. Afande, yeah. let's hurry, guys. Six packages. Let's, let's go. Hurry. Let's hurry. Okay. Let's hurry. Yeah, let's go for, for, for MC. Guys, hurry. Oh, hey guys, hello. Oh. Hey, hello. How are you? How are you? Hey, hey. How are you? Hey, hello. Oh. How are you? Hello. Okay, guys, let's settle. Let's settle down. Thank you. Let's settle down. You're most welcome, guys. Thank you. Woo. Good to have you. Good to oh, have yeah. you. Good to have you. Too. Guess what? Party families have been fed. Come on now. Woo! Because of your generosity. Wow. Hey, come on. The best MC we have. Hey. Hey. So since we're ending the year, mm -hmm. oh. we are going to give personal testimony. Come on. Come on. Personal? Testimony. Come on. Yes. Afande, please. Take oh, definitely, definitely. Thank you. <laughs> Guys, we thank God. I want us to celebrate one of our most, one of the most amazing MC leaders. Guys, eh? we have an amazing MC leader, Ooh. Nange Faith. Wow. Wow, yeah. you've done a very good job. We're really grateful. Thank you very much. Yeah, anyone with a testimony? Oh, how gracious, Diana, Elijah, <laughs> and of course, my beautiful wife. Here is that something ah, to say. That was <laughs> uh, guys. Come on, guys. Guys, you know who I use it to be. Stealing people's passes, what? But do you know what? The Lord has done amazing things. You know, the other business I had online, we opened a store, a physical store in Taliwa. It's amazing. I bless the Lord. Praise God, everyone. Amen. Praise him. Amen. I just want to thank you guys for accepting me into this beautiful family. Damali, oh my God. I can't even say That's so much, wife. but That's my wife, guys. I thank That's you my so wife. much. You called me the other time and I was all pretending, but now I'm here and I enjoy hanging out with you guys, Aww. praying with each other, you know, eating together. I just feel so loved yeah. and accepted. We love you. Yeah. Thank you so much, Damali, for inviting me all the time and for that link eh, wow. of every week. Thank you, girl. Wow. Hello, guys. Hello. Um, I want to thank God for yesterday. I finally visited my dad. And after 10 years, Afande, I thank you for encouraging me to go and visit him, to reconcile with him. Thank you, guys. It's well. Wow. It's well. Wow. Damali, please, go on. All right, you guys. This year has been such an incredible year. Oh, yeah. oh. When I saw Faith walking, yes. ah, I knew that there is a that God a in testimony. heaven. She used to invite me to church, and it was just not my thing. I was dealing with so many issues at the time. But... <laughs> You know, after I saw her walking, I knew that there was a God in heaven. So I just want to say thank you for inviting me. 
preach yeah, it, God preach it. And I knew that if he could do that for her, he, was, he would be able to heal all the issues I was dealing with Amen. in my heart. Yeah. And so I know that my life will never be the same again. Hallelujah. Sure. Yeah. Our lives will never be the same again. You guys, the Lord has been so good. You see me here? I used not to believe that me, I can be dead. I can hear anything from God. I didn't want anything to deal with God. But after acknowledging that truth, it helped me pose a question. Was I really worth saving? Hmm? I want us to thank the Lord. I really, really want to thank the Lord for my beautiful wife. Please stand up. Please stand up. Yeah. The Lord has been good with us. She is such a very patient woman. Thank you very much. She has given me a family, a very beautiful daughter. So cute. Yeah. And he has given me, I thank God because he has given me a church family in all of you. Amen. Thank you, Faith, for taking heed of that call. Give the glory to God. Yes. It has changed us and has changed the whole of Charlie Wajala community. We are really grateful. Thank you. Okay, enough for the tea. Yeah, surely. Group hug. Oh. Everyone, please grab a snack. Grab a snack before you go home, eh? The people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. Those who sat in the shadow of death have seen a light. For that reason I have come to give a light. The light. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I shine in the darkness and bring life to all men. I I'm the bread of life. You will be set free. You will be healed. You will laugh again. You will see the light. You will be restored. I have come. I have come. Make like a dog in a bow. Wow. Hey. Wow. It's such an inspiration. Done a whole lot of really good things in this world with your lack of patience. Yeah, I'm a straight shooter, keep the fame, keep the loose. You know I take the truth. Yeah. And I needed a friend so bad. Oh yeah, you change the game, it's like a revelation. Through the years 
music and all this change, I'm the same, just got a different way to make it. Music. Before that, when I came into the game, we had a thing, tell me where we lose it. Bow out. Wow.
Merry Christmas. Isn't it good to be born again today? On this Christmas Eve, I was just reflecting about Jesus and his birth. And I was thinking about how Jesus is the light of the world. And I am the light of the world. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 2 says, The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them a light has shined. And this is a prophecy. Isaiah 9 is a prophecy talking about Jesus and what Jesus has done and what Jesus is going to do and what Jesus has done in our lives. And it says, the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light, and that's Jesus. And those who dwelt in the land of the shadow of death, upon them a light has shined. And if you're a believer today, Jesus is in you, and you are the light of the world. And so, when there is darkness in your world, darkness in your community, darkness wherever you are, you are the light. Recently, power has been going off at our home. I don't know if that has been the story for you. But almost every night, power goes off. And when power goes off, what's the immediate thing to do? Is it to just chill and say, wow, power has gone off, let me enjoy the darkness? No. No. You find a light. If the light is not there, you find a candle. If the candle is not there, you find a lamp. If a lamp is not there, you light your um, phone torch and light the world. And we are living in a, a world which is dark. Dark with sin, dark with sickness, dark with poverty, dark with depression, dark with frustration. All around us, there is darkness. But we don't cower from the darkness. We don't hide from the darkness. We don't fear the darkness. Instead, what do we do? We shine. We are the light of the world. Matthew, Jesus says in Matthew, about us being the light. Matthew chapter 5, verse 16. He says, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden and you cannot be hidden you are not going to be hidden this Christmas even as you chew on that chicken and chew on that meat and enjoy that pizza and enjoy those good soft drinks and enjoy that nice juice and get presents you are going to be the light that cannot be hidden and what does that look like that looks different for different people Someone will come and they'll say they are sick. What will you do? You'll open your mouth, pray for them and heal them. Someone will come to you saying they have no food. What will you do? You'll go into your house and share some of your food. Someone will come saying, I've lost a loved one. What will you do? You'll comfort them. Someone will come with a hangover. Trying to get their joy from some dangerous substances and what will you do you'll tell them about jesus because you are the city on a hill that cannot be hidden and we are going to have opportunity for that all of this christmas with our family with our friends wherever we are but don't allow to be that he, that city on a hill that wants to be hidden let your light so shine that men may see your good works and glorify God. Choose this Christmas to be that light. Already, as your identity as a believer, you are the light. But you choose to let your light shine. God can't do that for you. Jesus can't light your, li your light for you. You have to choose to do it. You have to open your mouth and tell people about Jesus. You have to get out of your house and love on people. You have to say the prayer of healing. You have to encourage the person who is discouraged. You choose to let your light so shine. And so this Christmas, I encourage that you put on your candle, that you put on your light, 
that you'll switch it on and be the light of the world. Amen. message from Rev Ma. Wasn't that awesome? All right, I invite us to get up on our feet and let us worship our God together who has made us the light of this world.
worthy of all our worship. With our whole hearts we adore you, Lord. We lift our hands to you. We lift our hearts to you. Our minds are focused on you right now. There is none like you, O oh God. King of kings, Lord of lords, Prince of peace, blessing and honor and glory and power be unto you. moment, have a moment. Oh, come, let us adore him, oh, come. Oh, come, let us adore him.
make a shout of praise to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords from your heart to the ears of heaven we love you Jesus thank you for coming thank you for leaving thank you for dying thank you for rising again anybody thankful for Jesus one more round of applause to our King we wish you a happy birthday <laughs> happy birthday Jesus Merry Christmas will you turn to your two neighbors for me right now and wish them a Merry Christmas a Merry Christmas Merry Christmas please be seated once you've given that neighbor a warm hug and wish them a Merry Christmas what a blessing to see you this evening thank you so much for joining us for the Christmas Eve celebration service are you happy to be here does it feel like a celebration so far oh yes so beautiful you look lovely tonight I want to warmly welcome you here today my name is B3 I'm your host this place is full of joy the presence of God is in this place there is healing there is every good thing here tonight can you help me appreciate the amazing worship team that has ministered to us this evening wow now i acknowledge that today we have very special people in our midst everyone is special but there are people who are extra special if you're joining us for the first time at worship harvest a friend brought you a family member a neighbor a workmate we want to give you a warm worship harvest welcome would you just put your hand up that's all we want to ask you to sing a song your neighbor just wants to love on you people might even give you a christmas gift who knows neighbors worship harvest family help me warmly welcome each of these special wonderful people who have joined us for our christmas eve if you don't yet feel warmly welcomed you keep your hand up until you get your hugs if you wanted five you keep it up until you get them but we are so excited to have you on behalf of apostle mose and pastor ari who are here in the house we want to extend a warm welcome to you thank you so much for choosing to come and hang out with us we hope to see you again and again we love guests here at worship harvest and so we're going to tell you a little bit about ourselves because who knows you may not know who are these people we are a movement of the gospel discipleship and that is who we are and we are here for the purpose of catalyzing spiritual social and economic renewal in our immediate communities and as a result Oh yes, here at Worship Harvest, we believe that church begins on Monday and Sunday is garage time. Yes, we are about the mission of Jesus in our communities, in our homes. And this Christmas is a time, like Pastor Ari told us, to go out there and be the church. At our families, it's time to turn on the light, not the darkness. I don't know if you can turn on darkness. But it's time to turn on the light as God sends us out there this Christmas in our communities, in our families, in our homes, at our businesses, wherever we are, we are out there to be church. Amen. Now, it's already been an amazing evening, hasn't it? And you know, one of the things that I know about parties, at least when you go to children's parties who are honest, if you show up at a party empty-handed, how does the child whose birthday it is welcome you? Are they excited? My nephews and nieces will tell you, where is my gift? And so when you show up at a celebration, whoever you are celebrating, it is good practice to carry a gift for them. Amen. And every time we gather to celebrate Jesus, we carry? Of course we do. And I've been thinking about from the book of Genesis, God seems to honor gifts, which he calls offerings. An offering is something, when you offer something, you give it freely. Not so. It has to be of your free will. If it is forced, is it a gift? If I send you a list and the money to use to buy it, have you bought me a gift? Usually a gift is something that is of our own free will. And I think maybe that's the point, is when we carry a gift, it's an expression of our free will and love for Jesus. And what better time at Christmas time when we decided when Jesus' birthday is. We, you know, we set a birthday for Jesus. I like it. 
Sometimes if you don't know, if your parents don't know when you were born, choose a day which you like and make it your birthday. And on earth, we chose a birthday for Jesus and it's tomorrow. And as we celebrate Jesus' birthday, we bring gifts to him. We bring gifts to celebrate his birthday. But I want to show you something in the book of Exodus chapter 25. I'll just show you verse 1 and 2. Then the Lord spoke to Moses saying, here we read together, read with me. Then the Lord spoke to Moses saying, what did he say? Speak to the children of worship harvest that they bring me, say what a shock. Yeah, that they bring me, uh -huh. he continues to say, from, from, from. Uh oh the, the offering is from everyone, but not just everyone. From everyone who gives it willingly with his heart, you shall take my offering. Are there people tonight who want to willingly give with their heart to God? You're the one who the basket is coming to. The ones who want to willingly. That, he says, don't take it from those who are unwilling because it's not an offering. It is a forcering. Forcering. Eh, but it's an offering. And so tonight we come to Jesus. Willingly, with our hearts, bringing to him an offering. Saying, thank you. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for dying for me, for coming for me, for rescuing me. And tonight, some people will get to meet Jesus. And so we are giving an offering this evening as we give thanks to God for his goodness. Are you ready to give freely and willingly and joyfully to Jesus? Yes, I love it. I love the joy in the house. And as we do that, would you help me make welcome an anointed woman of God? Esther 4, as she comes to minister, you can do better than that.
das als Kind zu kommen. Mercy, everything mixed together. You know, we didn't just come to enjoy, but there's something that Jesus seemed to do more than anything else. I actually don't know if Jesus had a worship team. I don't know. I didn't see it. But the thing that he went about doing was teaching, preaching, and healing over and over and over. And, he, and it seems to me like that's how the power of God is most manifest, when his word is being preached. Now, the person who's going to bring us the word this evening is someone we love very much. But one of the things that I've noticed is Jesus says through, you know, John, in the book of John chapter 1, he says that he came to his own and his own did not receive him. But as many as received him. In other words, even though his own did not receive him, there are many who received him. Now for us, we are not foolish. We can't allow that to happen, that to be the story. Because if we don't receive, there are many who will receive. And those who receive get it right. However, the thing I want to celebrate and to sort of open your heart to about the person who's going to teach the word today is someone who walks in an anointing that sometimes you can miss because there's laughter, there's joy, there's over what, and in between there miracles are happening. So let me tell you a story. In the month of April, um, Apostle came to worship Harvest Gaiaza to do Thoroughly Equipped. And when he came, the people from Gaza and those who came, you remember he taught on generosity. While he was teaching on generosity, in the congregation was a man who had now gone through a divorce from his wife. And they had, were so serious about the divorce that both the wife and the husband, who called themselves exes at that point, had both now decided to, had actually gone, and, gone into new relationships and even had children there. So it was really final. So he was sitting in there as apostle is teaching on generosity. Do you know when you come with a burden, which has nothing to do with generosity, and the man is teaching on generosity, and you're like, where is the anointing? So this man sat through the service, and apostle taught on generosity, but on his heart, God had started to say, I can restore your marriage. So at the end of the service, we asked that, just sow a seed and name it. Sow a seed, even though it was generosity, whatever you want God to do for you. This man said, I don't know why, but I wrote family restoration and financial breakthrough. I won't tell you the full story because we don't have the time. But what I want you to know is right now as we speak, this is April this year. These people are back together, remarried, love each other, 
You cannot believe it unless they tell you the story. That is the person bringing the word today. As he teaches, things are shifting in your life. Miracles are coming to you. The things you carry today, you will leave them here. Because the anointing that God has placed on him breaks the yoke. Children of worship harvest, friends and family, put your hands together and make welcome Apostle Moses. Wow. Now, are there any people here who love Jesus? Like you and Jesus are tight. Are they there? Are you sure? Are you ready? Now, if you're tight with Jesus, I want you to stand up on your feet. I want you to make some ridiculous noise, clapping your hands, shouting, yeah! Thank you, Jesus! Thank you, Jesus! Woo! Amen. Please have your seats. Welcome to this Christmas Eve celebration. In case you are struggling to find somewhere to sit, there's a whole group of seats to my right which are available. Those of you who are seated at the cafe counter. <coughs> Amen. Welcome. I nearly said welcome to garage. And then I realized this is Christmas. If garage is on tomorrow at exactly nine o'clock, there's only one service at all the worship harvest locations at nine. So that people can go and start <coughs> roasting what needs to be roasted, among other things. If you come at 10, 11, 30, that you've come for YXP. You'll be alone, like so. Anyway, everyone has gone to the village, so anyway, you'll be super alone. But welcome, and thank you for being here. It's a great evening, isn't it? I'm seeing all the wonderful people in the world are here, led by none other than my wife. Hey! Woo! She's smart. She's anointed. She's disciplined, she's beautiful, she's amazing, and if you don't like it, go and hang yourself on a tomato tree. Please sit down, forgive, please sit down. We have many, all network leaders are here present with us, can you help me make them feel welcome? Thank you. Thank you, network leaders. Thank you for not going to the village early and being here with us. Location pastors are present with us at this uh, service. Whoever is doing the sound, I've been having a call during the week, so they are going to give me monitor sound so that I don't lose my voice in one night. My goodness, what a blessing. So can I, have, can I see the location pastor's hands, just the, the hands of the location? Wow, guys, what a blessing to have all these pastors. Awesome. Uh, we have here Mr. and Mrs. Hans and Beatrice Buxton. Hey! My God. You're very welcome. I have not seen them in the flesh since uh, the wedding. Yeah. And it's funny, yesterday... I'm writing a book, and yesterday I was writing a chapter which has uh, B2 in it. The reason she's called B3 is B2. B2 is the reason that B3 was called B3 because she came after B2, and B2 was already taken, so she took B3. And the people came later, they refused to take B4, B5, B6, and B7 because... Uh, no, but we have a B7. <laughs> We have a B7 in the house. I've seen a uh, uh, pastor, Ap no, it's not Apollo, it's Apollo, Apollo. Kabwa from Christway Church Global. <laughs> Help me make him feel welcome. 
It used to be Christchurch Church, Nigeria, and then he, he went global by opening a branch in Bulindo. Hey. You know, anytime you do something towards Chitukutwe, you're becoming global. Hey! Hey! You know why Worship Harvest is now global? Because we have a location in Chitukutwe. Led by the Ballet Samvons. Hey! And Pastor Noah's parents are in the house, so we have to sort of humble ourselves and not overdo it. You're very welcome. We are honored to have you. Wow. We have other parents in the house. Of course, of course, we are also parents. But I'm talking about, yeah, if, if your children can sing on the worship team, only the location, you're the kind of parents we are talking about. Yeah, so all our parents... The parents of our pastors, elders. You know when your elders' parents, when your elders' parents are around, eh? hey, <laughs> you don't go around doing cartwheels on stage. So, all the parents, you're welcome. It's a delight to have you. And for those of you who are still angry, in spite of the fact that this is Christmas season, <clears throat> what you do? What a shock! <clears throat> now we are this is a very life giving service as you've witnessed from the worship the carols the the exhortation the offering whoever thought you can feel an anointing in the offering the offering the skits ah, with that skit written by Pastor Roxy Those of you are looking as if, <coughs> if they tell you that your next year you are the one writing the skit, you just wonder why by the time the summon time half of the people have left, that it was your skit. <coughs> what? Your good skit. Now this was a thank you. Wow, people are gifted. Awesome. When you can lead the location, write books, edit books, and write a skit direct like that. Now, some of you are looking at me saying, his time is going. I know. It's my time. That is going, not yours. So. <clears throat> I'm preaching good already. You like the message. Yesterday we were hanging out with the movers and shakers at our house. And I had some very interesting testimonies. Maybe I'll share one. There were many. Now there was this person who had so many things going on in their life that they could only wake up at midday. Oh, oh yes. My, all my stories are true. Yeah, midday, medical and other things. Like the earliest they can get up out of bed is noon when the sun is in the middle of the sky. Now she wakes up at 4 a.m. Yeah, just by hanging around in gang. She, could, she had reached a point where she could no longer read. She couldn't read one sentence. Now she reads books. Oh, yeah. God is good. I'm telling you, some of you, you're here, you think that the God we serve is the other one where they just say, Banang is up there in the sky. God is amazing. Someone else came and they sat next to the wrong person in the garage. Because when they asked the person, I want to get baptized. Where do I sign up? Can you imagine you're asking someone in garage who looks like they've been around sometime? I want to get baptized. What do I do? <clears throat> do you know what the pastor told them? There is a thing called movers and shakers. I <laughs> Yeah. 
So someone sent him a, sent him a link to join movers and shakers. <coughs> so when he came for the movers and shakers meeting, which happens after garage at about two, he, he thought we were going to say baptism what? Class. But the more he listened, the more he realized this is the wrong class. This is not baptism class. People are talk, teaching things like eh, other stuff. You know, in movers and shakers, we teach, you know, things to take over the world and stuff like that. So that's what was being taught. <laughs> baptism. Baptism. Anyway, if I say that, you just stay. Do you know their testimony? Do you know the testimony of a person who stayed in the move? And the movers and shakers thing. Huh? And they only attended two sessions. Because they joined late recently before we closed. Two sessions. This side they don't want to hear the the power the what What a shock. So this this is this is a testimony of this young man. He said Two sessions, in fact it wasn't the two sessions, it's the first one where he was in the wrong class, right? He's, you're seated, you expect the people to teach about baptism, but they are teaching Simanyi, about what, bichi bichi, yeah. Getting in the word, what, outliers. Seven years of ulcers healed. Even the band, I need to change the band. Even the band, I need to change the band. Hey. So sit down and listen to the word because you never know what might fall off you tonight. Yeah, you may have come saying, I only want to hear a Christmas message about three, what? Three wise men. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> And then we teach something else and you're like, this is the wrong class. My friend, you don't know what's about to happen to you. Hey, the word of God is powerful. I, to I, meant, I told you only about B2, but Hans was uh, the director of Andwomak, the previous director of Andwomak Ministries Uganda and Christ Bible College. And it was during his time that we all did CBC year one. So he's our principal in, in that regard. So awesome. Now, this is a true story. All my stories are true, except those that involve foxes, hyenas, hares, <laughs> and the others. So our, our theme tonight is a candle in the dark. Babel, sit down. Candle in the dark. My sister tells me a story. My sister Sarah Okelo Mirembe, who I'm sure either is here or is watching online, tells me this, this story. This story is about my dad. Okay? That my dad, when he was so young, hmm? And, you know, I can always go back home and they correct me that the details there. But this is the one I remember very clearly. Okay. You understand, eh? And it's my story. So I stand by it. And all my stories are true. So, the story goes that my dad's dad died when he was an infant like baby and then as was the tradition then my dad's mom was supposed to have been inherited as the wife of my dad's uncle okay so I think he inherited her but did not like treat her like a wife so 
put her in a hut there by the side with his with her son and let life be it, this is a long time ago as you can imagine now as life went on my dad had like a shirt only yeah as life went on in a, in a village in a place called Chambaya where they only speak Lula Moji yeah as life went on they he grew up not going to school and he my, my dad's uncle who was now the acting dad had cows so his herdsmen would take the cows to graze with and, uh, and many people would bring their cows together those days the landlords were not as they are now so there were guys from Teso who would also come with their cows so my dad would speak fluent at is it at Teso something like that and so yeah and so one day the the head teacher of a local school they call it they call it a subgrade school as in it's below grade 1 those church schools where they just taught people how to read and write the inspector the district inspector was coming to inspect the school the district inspector was a white man Okay. So he's coming to inspect the school and the, the head teacher is in total panic because they can't seem to string together a presentation for the inspector. If your neighbor is crying, please quiet them down. If your neighbor is walking around, drag them, sit them down and put a seatbelt on them. immediately moreover because they are disrupting the powerful story so as they panic they, they kept bringing different kids seeing something the kids couldn't sing they bring different kids who are in the school sing they couldn't sing the guy is coming until one teacher told him by the way there is this boy called Bamzibide he's not in the school he goes with uh, the cattle keepers, but he can sing. So they, they must have said, bring him. Village boy is not in the school. Now he didn't even have clothes for, so they have to arrange some clothes. The inspector arrives. They bring a one bam zivide to save the headmaster's Say now, nah, huh? sing. Hey, he sang and sang and sang all the Lula Moji songs. He could sing. You know, if you are from Busoga, you probably you've had many folk songs that are sung or played by these guys who use instruments. It is many of those were written by my dad. So he sang and sang, and the inspector was like, what class is this boy? <laughs> and they're like, he's about to start. <laughs> Meanwhile, he's like nine years old. And the inspector was like, I'm going to pay for him. I'm going to take care of all his needs. I want this boy in school. So my dad studied, went to primary school. Because now it was an inspector paying. He went to Miri Primary School, Busoga College Miri. He went to university. Do you know what he did at university? Music. He studied in Australia advanced 
Do you know what he studied in Australia? His advanced studies? Music. He came back, he taught music in teacher training schools. That's where he met my mom. My mom was also musical, so. <laughs> wow. He taught many years. And then when uh, the then bishop of Busoga Diocese, Bishop Cyprian, was starting some development work in the diocese, he asked him to step away from teaching and come and help him. He came, joined him, served him, served with him, set up, I think, the education department of the diocese, did many trainings. On his last day on earth, he was in a training, in a seminar, which he had organized, residential my mom had gone for the first time because she used not to go with him. And soldiers came in with guns. That was, those were the days when there was no state, state functional. <clears throat> Asked for money. He said, we don't have money. We already bought everything we need. They hit him once, prayed one prayer. Jesus, it's time. Take me to heaven. They shot him. He showed up in heaven. <clears throat> now, if that white man had not gone to that village to inspect that school that day, my dad would have remained a herdsman. He will never have met my mom because my mom was the firstborn of a reverend canon, educated family. He will never have met my mom. I would have been <clears throat> even, even the imagination is difficult. You know what I'm saying? Matthew 4.16 says, the people who sat in darkness have seen a great light and upon those who sat in the region and shadow of death light has dawned. I, I'd hope they would show you some scriptures. The people who sat in darkness have seen. You see, my dad had no future. Yeah. He literally lived in darkness until a person bearing light came. Am I making sense? Someone with a different persuasion came to the village and said, I want that kid. I'll pay for him. It's all on me. The people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. Now, what they're talking about, actually, it's a little bit of a bigger thing. Now, let me show you the, the context, okay? Start at verse 13. This is Jesus when he had come. And he, had, he was making choices as to where to live. Uh, let's read it together. He says, uh, read it out loud. And leaving Nazareth, he came and dwelt in Capernaum, which is by the sea in the regions of Zebulun and Naphtali, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, by the way of the sea beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people who sat in darkness, I've seen a great light. And upon those who sat in the region and shadow of death, light has come. Today the world is different. There are no subgrade schools. Many children are not had keeping cattle. But today there are still people who dwell in different kinds of darkness. 
just like these guys, Zebulun and Naphtali, they literally say they dwelt in darkness. Now, it doesn't mean the sun didn't shine there. That's not what it means. It means that the light of God's revelation never reached them. They were doomed to live a life that can easily be forgotten. And there are people today who live in darkness. It's a version. It can be different kinds of darkness. There are people who live in poverty. And they are waiting for light. There are people who live in depression and they are waiting for light. There are people who live in pain of past things that have happened to them. Maybe medical situations. I've told you someone who could only wake up at midday. Maybe they are living in relational turmoil and strife. Their whole existence is strife. You know when you live in a home and the only language is war. Oh, there are people who live like that. Maybe they are living in drunkenness. You know, it's interesting how people try to solve spiritual problems with physical things. There is an emptiness and you some think that a physical thing can fill it. But the emptiness is not physical. So you're, 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 yeah. There are people who are living like that. Now the people of Naphtali and Zebulun, that's somewhere in between them was the city of Capernaum. A great light moved in. A great light moved into the neighborhood. And that great light is called Jesus. And that's the great light we celebrate today. Now, let me shed some light on that light. First John 1.15 says, First John 1.15 together. This is the message which we have heard from him and declare to you that God is light and in him is not darkness at all. And of course we are all here and thinking which people are those who badly need the light. The light is Jesus. The light is God. Because God is light. I was having a conversation with a friend today who lives and works in another part of the world. And the more you listen, the more you feel like, eh. There are people in another part of the world who anything to, you say God, Jesus, they get offended. They flip. They're like, they have something sitting on their head waiting for you to say anything like that. Hey, what a shock. Now, that's a different kind of darkness. It's not the poverty in your village. It is the pro material prosperity and spiritual poverty. I don't know what city it is that Bishop Doug said that, th is it 30% or 60% of all the houses in that city have one person living in them? Yeah. One of the cities in Germany. A certain big percentage of houses have one occupant per house. Now imagine loneliness is like an epidemic in that place. And when you go to the supermarket, you, they still know how to talk to you. Pick your things if you go because you can order online. But if you decide to venture out, you pick your stuff, and then there is this counter where it's self. Yeah, and then you go back into the car, back home, and you have to talk to anyone. Oh, that's darkness. You can have material prosperity and spiritual poverty. 
Or you can have spiritual prosperity and material poverty. Or you can have physical poverty. Pain. Ah. Should I continue? Am I using my time well? Look at Revelation 21, 23. Revelation 21, 23. 1, 2, 3, we read. The city had no need of the sun or of the moon to shine in it, for the glory of God illuminated it. The Lamb is its light. The Lamb is its light. That's the Lamb that moved into Capernaum, the land of Zebulun and Naphtali. When a person like that decides to move into your neighborhood, my goodness, my goodness, my goodness. When the light moves into the neighborhood, darkness is over, it's over, it's over. He says the lamb is its light. Ma, 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 ma. Can you imagine being there and you're a carrier? Okay. Back to my notes because I suspect that excitement is about to take me over. But I have to keep going. Now, here is the interesting thing. Does the world need Jesus? Yes. Does your village need Jesus? Yes. Does the, do the, ex, the families in your extended family need Jesus? Yes. Do your workmates need Jesus? Yes. That's when people say, oh yes. <laughs> Does Uganda need Jesus? The lamb is the light. Matthew 5, 14. Matthew 5, 14. 1, 2, 3, we read. You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Now, you thought the light ended with the lamb. Now, the lamb who is the light turns around and tells you, since I'm in you and you are in me <laughs> Whoa. I'm not the only light he says I'm not the only light he says I'm not the only light you are the light I'm going somewhere yeah, uh, uh, today I'm not teaching. I'm just preaching. So one line and we shout. One line we shout like that. Yeah. <laughs> we are not going into the Greek and the Hebrew and uh, whatever. No, one line and we shout. One line and we shout. Upstairs, are you there? You are the light. Ephesians 5 8. Ephesians 5 8. I told you one line. Today I'm preaching like a scientist. Yeah. Yeah. Calculations. Just this line, line upon line, line upon line, and we go. Yeah. People are like, dinner. We are going. For you were once. No, look, Walida. It's not, it's not saying you were in darkness. No. You were that darkness. <laughs> yeah, you were not in darkness. No, at least the people of Zebulun and Naphtali dwelt in darkness. No, no, for you, once upon a time, <laughs> you were what? Shout, thank you, Jesus. But 
But when? But when? But when? Now you are light in the Lord. <laughs> you are not in the light. No, you are the light. You are not in the light. <laughs> you are the light. Just like the Lamb is the light of the heavenly Jerusalem, you are the light of your neighborhood of your family of your workplace among your friendships in your city in your nation oh yeah <laughs> and the people who dwelt in darkness When you move into the neighborhood, just like Jesus moved into Capernaum, they have seen a great light. Mm. Ah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. It is the Bible we are reading. We didn't come to reflect on the ideas of men. We are reading the scripture. And the scripture declares that in that marriage, you are the light. In that office, you are the light. To those children, you are the light. In that strife filled extended family, you are the light. To that group of depressed friends who don't open their curtains, you are the light. To those young boys who are trying to become the most high, you are the light. You are the light. You are the light. You, my friend, wherever you are, whoever you are, whatever goes on in your life, I don't know what Satan has told you. But I'm here to tell you what Jesus says to you and about you. You are the light. You are the light. You are the light. <laughs> when you enter, darkness flees. When you enter, poverty leaves. When you enter, Demons find their way. When you enter, sickness gets out. He says, walk as children of light. Now, you know, to a religious person who has been to church all their lives, they are going to corrupt that statement in their minds and say, they think they are saying, walk in the light. No, there is another verse that says walk in the light. But this is not what it says. It says walk as children. In other words, light gave birth to you. If you knew what I'm saying, you'd be more excited than that. Of course, you're telling me, prove it. First Thessalonians 5 5. You are all sons of light. You remember, God is light. <laughs> God is light. Whose son are you? Light begets light. Hey. 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 
when he says the lamb is its light and the lamb lives in you ay 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 when you show up the people who dwelt in poverty the people who dwelt in acute need the people who dwelt in ignorance the people who dwelt in illiteracy the people who dwelt in a land of injustice have seen a great light Daniel 5.14 Today I'm just we'll verse and we shout. <clears throat> I have heard of you. <laughs> uh, I have heard of you. Mm. The demon stole the seven sons of Sceva. We have heard about Jesus. But it's not only Jesus. We have heard about Paul. It's like up there in the second heavens when we are discussing principalities, talking to powers and wickedness in the heavenly places. They are like, they are these, the following fellows are disturbing our ability to operate. Jesus. Paul. Apmo. Hey! I'll put your name if you want. I'll put your name if you want. You see, don't sit down and let the devil intimidate you. <laughs> He's going to try and intimidate you. I say, you, you who was quarreling with your wife yesterday, what light are you? Tell him, get behind me, Satan. Whoa. I have heard of you. We have heard about you. And what have we heard about you? That the Spirit of God is in you. Are there people here? The Spirit of God is in you? Do you know how that happens when you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior? And as a result of that, and that light and understanding and excellent wisdom are found in you. They are not found in the books you're reading, no. They are, f they are not found in the Bible, no, 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 no. They are found in you. Shout, I'm understanding. Light reveals things. The things that were not visible become visible. Everybody close your eyes for a minute. Just close your eyes for a minute. Try and walk around if you want. How is the experience? Then open them. Okay, now. <laughs> light reveals things. You see, when you went to the bedroom and switched on, and you saw the bed, and the bedside table, and the carpet and the dressing table the light did not create those things in the room they were always there and revealed you see there is money that has not yet been revealed There are people, they are sitting on piles and piles of millions and millions of dollars 
they just have not switched on. And they walk around and make their financial decisions and their purchasing power and their generosity levels all reveal that the light is off even though the money is there. Mm. Yeah, there are people who carry joy that can light up a city. But the light is off. <laughs> the light is off. There are people who carry wisdom for 300 books to be written by them, but the light is still off. There are people who carry songs that will be sung for a hundred years. The woman who wrote the song, Great is Thy Faithfulness, was blind. 1800, funny cross by, we sing it today. <laughs> she couldn't see with her physical eyes, but her light was on. She could get into the spirit and pull out a song that will be sung generation after generation after generation. She's not here to promote her song. She's not here to put her song on, on, on Apple Music. She's not here to, but it is sung. Light. Light. Light gives direction. How can you tell where you're going without light? Light gives direction. There are things called lighthouses, which ships will know there is land there, dock, or stay far away, depending on the situation. How many have you met? They talk to you for exactly two minutes and you know this person lacks direction. Yeah. Their life, their direction in life is what is happening at the time. That's direction for them. You can see they will not get where they are supposed to be going. Light enables you to study, to read. In other words, light eliminates ignorance. I'm out of time. I must finish. Light brings color and beauty. Without light, you can't tell green from blue, from yellow, from red, from orange. And there are people whose lives are colorless. Hear song sang, see the sun now bursting through the clouds black and white unto color all around. All is new in the Savior I am found. This is a living now. There are people, their lives are colorless. Their lives are bland. Their lives taste like cucumber. <clears throat> there is no light. There is no excitement. There is no adventure. There is no daring. There is nothing like this year I'm going to do something that's going to scare the hell out of Satan. N nothing like that. It's just one little box to another little box waiting for the last box called the coffin. No color. I refuse to participate. Far from me, far from you. Ah, you're, you're, you are about to enter color in life. Color, color, color. Excitement. Brilliance. Mama, mama, 
Light steam, just take off a little bit. Take off a little bit to demonstrate what we're talking about. Oh, ish. Wow, mercy. Wow, how exciting is that? Put back on, we cannot stand it. There is light. Light creates. <laughs> Should I tell you this one? Are you sure you want to hear this one? Light creates speed. It's a well-known fact that everyone drives faster during the day than at night. Because there's more light. The brighter it is, the faster you move. You know, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. You see, light is revelation. Arise, shine, for your light is come. I, I was sharing this with gang. I was telling them that in the world, our time is called chronos. And it is measured in seconds, minutes, hours, days, weeks, months, years, decades, etc. That's life on earth. In the kingdom, time is called kairos. And it is measured in revelations. The timing of God is the timing of revelation. It's not about how many years does it take to do this. No, it's the moment you see it, you've stepped into it. That's why one of these days, you're going to take exactly three months to do something that has taken some people ten years to do. What takes 10 years? Why? In the kingdom, time is measured in revelations. The faster you cross revelational boundaries, the faster you move. It's not about the birthdays. No. Forget birthdays. Every revelation you cross and understand and walk into is an epoch that you've crossed. You can cross several epochs in one year. When I caught the revelation of first fruit, we built a house in six months. Having worked fourteen years without ever raising enough money to build a house in fourteen years of work. Revelation six months house. This church took 14 years to reach 15 locations. In two years, we've added 55 locations. That's more than two per month. After doing one a year, on average. It's called light. It's called light. When I started listening to Bishop Duck, my income doubled. I will not tell you what it was then. 
but it didn't it wasn't a curve that oh now you listen to bishop Doug. let's go slowly slowly no this month it is this the next month it is twice that and it doesn't matter what i do it can't go back look uh, uh, uh. oh yeah light gives speed speed you live one lifetime and by the time they are burying you they are burying a person who has accomplished what it takes 10 lifetimes to live light gives life have you heard of photosynthesis Light leads to growth. I'm out of time. Which people in the dark are waiting for your lights? Which is your Zebulun and Naphtali? Please stand up, everyone, as we conclude. Just on your feet. Where will your light shine? You say Jesus is the light, and in that you're right. But the light turns around and tells you, you also are the light. So where will it shine? Where will it shine? In whose life? In whose family? In whose neighborhood? In what city will it shine? Which situation arise, which situation is waiting for your arrival for the story to immediately change? Lazarus was dead for days. When light showed up, the story had to be rewritten. The widow of Nain was on her way to the funeral of her son. When light arrived, the story had to be rewritten. The woman with the issue of blood had spent all on physicians. When light arrived, the story had to be rewritten. The man at the pool of Bethesda had been there 38 years. When light arrived, the story had to be rewritten. Tabitha was dead. Light arrived in the person of Peter, the apostle. The story had to be rewritten. The man at Lystra had been born a cripple. When light arrived in the person of Paul, the story had to be rewritten. My dad would have died a poor herdsman when light arrived in that village. The story had to be rewritten and it continues right before your eyes. Where are you going and what stories are about? What, What books are they about to tear apart and say, end of script, wrong script, the director has changed the end of the story. Someone has gotten onto stage and has disrupted the script the devil had written for this family. The script the devil had written for this person. The script the devil had written for this teenager. The script the devil had written for these children. Sarah has entered the stage and is changing that script and that person is you. Praying the spirit for the honest expectation of creation eagerly awaits for the revelation of the sons of God who are light. Oh, we bless you. Come on, lift, lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Thank you, Jesus. 
Sikalama de K, Sifraka Shireka. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the story changes now. The story changes now. The story changes now. Thank you, Lord. As we conclude this service, I want you to make a mental note of one story that you are fully aware of. Right now, the Lord is bringing to your mind a story. <laughs> this morning, I got into my wallet and got out transport for my two girls because they were going to their homes for Christmas. They came as house helps. They are now my daughters. One is studying law. <laughs> One is studying huh? business, business studies. The story had to change because they came into a house of light. Make a mental note of a story that the light in you is about to encounter and change forever. We are walking in the footsteps of Jesus when he moved into Zebulun, into Naphtali, into Capernaum. The people who dwelt in darkness saw a great light. There are people whose lives are about to be eternally changed like my father's life was changed forever because you have gone to a place you've moved into a neighborhood they've come to work into your house they have come to work in your company they have moved into your location they have joined your mission or community and their story is about to change Are you ready to receive it? I'm about to pray. If you want it, just wherever you are, receive. Thank you, Father, for light. Thank you for the Holy Spirit who is present right now, who is giving wisdom and light, understanding. Story-changing anointing comes upon you now. Now, now, now. Wherever spaces you enter, the stories are going to change. The stories are going to change. At that border border stage, the stories are going to change. In that market, the stories are changing. In that school, some of you, God is sending you to schools. When they open, the stories are changing. In that skate park, in that place where young people play the stories are changing stories are changing in cities all over the world I see light going to all over the world from this place none of my words shall fall to the ground stories are changing People who dwelt in darkness have seen light. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. As you impart wisdom and light to your children from within, may it shine. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Everyone standing. At this point, I'm going to ask nobody moving. Wherever you are, children, stop moving. If you are near a child, stop them. Stop them. Ask them to stand still for a moment. If you're here, if you're watching us online, if you're in one of the locations that are watching this and you've never given your life to Jesus, 
In other words, you are still in the darkness. He wants you to be the light of the world. He doesn't want just, he just doesn't want you to only see the light. He wants you to become the new light for others. And I want to pray with you. So wherever you are, as everyone is praying and everyone minding their business, I just want you to put your hand up. I want to pray with you. If you're saying, I want to give my life to Jesus tonight. Wherever you are, put it up straight. I want to see it. Just put it up straight, wherever you are. Thank you for those hands. Thank you for that hand. Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you for that hand. I see it. People upstairs, are there hands? Thank you for, thank you for that hand. All those people whose hands are up, come here. I want to pray with you. Come, I want to pray with you. I want, I want to pray with you. You're saying, Pastor, I have understood my assignment. I have understood my assignment to be the light. I want you to come forth. Just check, no, stay there. I just, I, not, I need to shake your hand. Welcome, welcome. People, I don't hear you appreciating. The Bible declares that there is celebration in heaven when one person comes to the light. Welcome, my brother. Welcome, my brother. You'll never be the same. Welcome. Welcome, my sister. Welcome. There are more people coming, so I want us to encourage them as they come. Wherever you are, you're feeling like your feet are moving you. Just start walking. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about anyone else. Just start walking. Someone, your heart is beating faster. You're saying, ha, ha, is it me? Yeah, it is you. Welcome. Welcome. Welcome to be the light. Welcome to be the light. Thank you for bringing your friends. Anyone else? Are there people coming from upstairs? Should we wait for people coming from upstairs? All right, I think some people are still on their way. More people. Some, some people around there, you need to start walking. In that region there. In that region, I need you to start walking. Upstairs has arrived. Welcome. 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 This is the best stage in life to give your life to Jesus. Welcome, my sister. Welcome. Are there more people coming? Just come now. Come now. Come now. Come now. Now is the time for light. Now is the time for revelation. Now is the time for your life to become what God created you to be. Come, 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 come. Welcome. Can I shake your hand? You're very welcome. Thank you. More people are coming. More people are coming. More people are coming. Can someone help the people this side move that side in case you need to balance it out? More people are coming. Welcome, young children. Yeah, God bless you. God bless you as you come. God bless you. God bless you. All right. There are people in this, there's someone in that area there. I don't know who you are, but you're delaying the end of the service. So just walk. If you're the one, you are there. This, by the way, I'm not, we, these are not like we don't sit around and guess and say, point in that area. No. Yeah. One time I was preaching and it was all on screen and there was a guy in uh, Nachifuma. He was the sound man. He used to set up for the service, but he wasn't saved. Hey, he says, one day I looked at him. Ah, he, he felt fire on, on, the, on the chair. He had to get up and go in front. Sound man, yeah. So you might be here saying, hmm. let, let me tell you, going to church doesn't make you light. Makatala, bakasile, broho, sikataya. Going to church doesn't make you a Christian. Just like if you sleep in a garage, you don't become a car. So I need light, light, light people. People who are becoming light come forward of any age. Any age. There is no junior Holy Spirit. There is no senior Holy Spirit. There is only one Holy Spirit. Any age. Keep coming. Keep coming. Thank you, Jesus. 
think we had some new arrivals. Welcome. Welcome. Ah, this, yeah, welcome. Awesome. Thank you, Jesus. Pastor B3, come. Come with the microphone. Thank you, Jesus. She's going to lead you on a prayer of faith and she'll tell you what to do next. Can we appreciate Jesus? Wow. Welcome to the family of God. There is a party in heaven right now for each and every one of you precious people. Amen. The Bible tells us that how we get born again is we believe in our hearts and we simply confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and that he died for our sins. And that's what we are going to do. So I'm going to pray a prayer and you repeat the words after me, even those of you online. And just like that, Jesus comes into your life and takes over. Amen. So why don't you pray this prayer after me? Just put your hand on your chest and say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, today I accept you, today I accept you. as my Lord, and as my savior and as my savior i receive your love i receive your love i receive your forgiveness i receive your forgiveness today i am a child of god today i am a child of god i am born again i am born again lord lord write my name write my name in the lamb's book of life in the lamb's book of life today i am born again today i am born again now i want you to just point your finger like this one finger like this as if you're warning. Huh? Say, Satan, Satan, from today, from today you, have no place you have no place in my life. In my life. I, belong to Jesus. I belong to Jesus. I am his alone. I, am his alone. I bind you, I bind and, you. All your work and all your work in my life. I am never going back. I'm never going back. I am a child of light. I am a child of light. You are out of my life. You are out of for the rest of my life. For the rest of In my Jesus life. name. In Jesus name. Come on, let us clap our hands to Jesus. Wow. Now I want to invite you to just follow Pastor Stephen over there as the rest of you join heaven in celebration. Please join Pastor Stephen. He's just going to go with you, write down your names, some details, and know how to follow you up and pray for you. Can you give a hand clap for this Christmas gift to Jesus? Amen. We are ending the year, you know. He crowns the year with his goodness. When Apostle was teaching today, and he said that some of you are going to do in three months things that have taken people 10 years to do. And then later, he said that he received revelation. And after revelation, he built a house in six months. I got the sense that for many people, this year you thought you were going to make progress. That there are things you wanted to do this year. At the beginning of the year, you were certain. And today we receive the answer. Revelation. Revelation. And it hit me that God has been, the enemy <laughs> has been fighting revelation the whole year. It's not a mistake that the example apostle gave was that the person was waking up at midday. That there are people who started the year ready. That this year I'll be waking up at 4 a.m. I was like, apostle, I'm the one, help me. And you've not been waking up at the time you thought you'd be waking up. And when you wake up, last week I caught myself. I woke up early at four to pray. And for two hours I was on WhatsApp. The enemy has been stealing revelation. 
the enemy has been stealing revelation. And right now we are going to respond. I know you are feeling in your heart and you didn't know what to pray, but that's why we have the Holy Spirit. Yes, we pray in tongues. We, we don't know what we are going to pray, but we are going to pray it. And because the apostle is here and he has taught, teaching is the seed for obedience. I believe that we are receiving strength. Strength to do the things that we wanted to do. And we are going to do them. I believe that in three months and that in six months, there's going to be testimonies. Because you're walking into revelation. For some of you, it's concerning your health. For some of you, it's concerning your marriages. For some of you, it's your locations. You've been wondering why you're stuck. For some of you, it's your mission or community frontiers. For some of you, it's your finances. They've been struggling. Your physical garage attendance, your marriage. Someone here, barrenness is going in the name of Jesus. Just lift up your hands and pray. Just pray in the spirit. 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 Pray in the we are winning. We are more than conquerors. We receive impartation of speed in the name of Jesus. We receive impartation of speed in the name of Jesus. Yes, yes. We receive the impartation of praying long hours. Apostle gave that word at the beginning of this year. But the enemy has been fighting it. We will pray long hours. We will pray long hours. We will enjoy the presence of the Lord. Apostle gave a word that we should take in doses, doses of the word. Chunks of the word. But the enemy has been fighting it. Today it ends in Jesus' name. This year, people have been falling sick, but we declare again that we are a disease-free zone in Jesus' name. Maya Tesekera. We say no to blood clots. We say no to blood clots. Yep. Anyone here that has a blood clot, we consider yep. that blood clot gone in the name of Jesus. We say no to asthmatic attacks. We put an end to seizures. Right now, as I say seizures, you know someone who's been having seizures. We put an end to seizures in Jesus' name. We put an end to young people getting high blood pressure. We put an end to young people getting diabetes. We put an end to untimely deaths in accidents. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. As he taught also, there are people in this room. You know God sent you. You know God sent you. You know he asked you to start an MC. You know he sent you to a country. You know he sent you to a hosting center. To be light. To be light. That there's a story in a city, in a village yep. out there that Spons. needs to be changed. There's an up more somewhere who's waiting for you. God is saying, do not be afraid. I am with you. I am your God. Let nothing terrify you. I will protect you. I will uphold you. The provision you're looking for is in that place. It's in that place. Don't wait to first fix everything here, then go. Israel had to go to the promised land. Do not be afraid. That's what God is saying. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. 
this is a category of people God has told you and it's for purposes of the gospel and you've had so many questions God is saying do not be afraid do not be afraid I am with you I am your God let nothing terrify you let nothing terrify you I know you're here and I know you're in this place don't come forward, but just lift up your hand and just start praying where you are. Say, lead me, Lord. I will go. Lead me, Lord. You have not been given a spirit of fear, but of love and of power and of a sound mind. Yeah, just pray silent. It's okay. Just lift up your hands and surrender. Say, I surrender it all to you, O oh God. Lift them up straight. Don't be ashamed. We are not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation. It is the power of God unto salvation. We will be light. We carry understanding. We carry wisdom. We carry wisdom. And just say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, because you lead me. Thank you, Jesus, because you guide me. Thank you, Jesus, because you will keep me. Thank you, Jesus, because you will provide for me. Thank you, because I have nothing to be afraid of. I have nothing to fear. I am the light. I am the giant. That place needs me. That place needs me. That place needs me to eradicate poverty. That place needs me. The Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the Lord is upon you because he has anointed you to preach the good news to the poor. Come on, to set the captives free. You are the one. You are the one. You are the one. Just say thank you, Jesus. Let there be a jubilation and a shout in this house. Come on. For everyone that's going. For everyone that's going. Hallelujah. Just clap your hands. The Spirit of the Lord is here. Come on, lift your voice and sing. Come from your own. Fall from you all things and to you all things you deserve the glory. Hey, oh, I love you, oh, I love you, oh, I love you, oh, I love May God bless you. May He cause His face to shine on you. May you shine like the bright stars that you are into the dark neighborhoods that you go to. I cast every sickness and disease that seeks to afflict you. No more shall it. I declare you free. May you enter the new year majestically in strength and not in weakness with joy and not in sadness I cancel every death that is planned to attack your family this coming week to disrupt your end of year in the name of Jesus I say you shall live and not die your family shall live and not die no death no accident no freaky stuff. No acute men medical attacks. We refuse all of that. And may the peace of God that is beyond understanding guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all 
now and forever. Amen. God bless you so much. Thanks for coming out. See you tomorrow, 9 o'clock. And see you on 31st at 7 p.m. Remember, people will be back from the village. If you come late, you look for a seat. I will pray for you.